We're going to be reading this book, Atomic Habits. Uh, hopefully a lot of people show up, but we don't know. Hello, hello, hello. We're going to be reading this book, Atomic Habits. Um, it's a really good book. And... Uh, it's life-changing, actually. It's incredibly life-changing, but only if you decide to change your life. Because books and people don't change you. You change you. If you really think about it. So, but information is also really important. Knowledge is really important. How to make good habits inevitable and bad habits impossible. This is what we're going to be reading. How to automate a habit and never think about it again. That's also a really good uh, topic. So we're going to be reading. We will be reading for like uh, an hour or uh, a little bit more than an hour. Uh, the cardinal rule of behavior change. So uh, we're going to be reading like two chapters. Um Let's see. Thank you guys for joining. Can you comment what country you're joining from? What country do we have? Do you guys know the meaning of procrastinating? Procrastinating. Gabby, thank you for following. PH here. What's PH? We got UK. Fatma from UK. We got Estella. Estella. From Brazil, Syria. Wow. Uh, what's PH? I'm sorry uh, if I don't know. Uh, some abbreviation. Oh, the Philippines. Very, very cool. Thank you for joining. Oh, we have more than one person from the Philippines. Florida, USA. Oh, I'm here in Tennessee, USA. Always my people from Nepal. Love it. We always get a lot of people from Nepal. So thank you guys for joining. Uh, in the previous live, a couple days ago, uh, I read this previous uh, chapter. Walk slowly, never backward. Um, the second, the third law of behavior change, which is make it easy. So <clears throat> what other country do we have? We got Uganda. Please share my life with your friends so that they can also join. Happy New Year from Vietnam. Very cool. Yeah, share my life with your friends um, so that they can also join and uh, practice their English. Uh, what else? And uh, yeah, and learn something very, very important about habit. Okay. So yeah. Uh, no more 2023 thank you for sharing my live we got david from houston texas from kenya thailand Ooh, nice houston texas okay cool 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 we have more people from from vietnam do we have anyone from iraq or kurdistan or saudi arabia do we have anyone from uh tennessee united states okay so I'm going to start. Please, if you have any questions, uh, ask me, you know. Uh, I'd love to help explain certain vocabulary words. So, or like ideas or whatever. My my life is more like a, a, um, a classroom where you can ask questions. If you don't understand something, sometimes I love learning from your opinion. So, so yeah. Um, so... The law of least effort. The law of least effort. The law of least effort. The smallest amount of effort. The law of not trying so hard. Okay? Let's see. In his award-winning book, Guns, Germs, and Steel, anthropologist and biologist Jared Diamond points out a simple fact. Different continents have different shapes. Different continents, like the continents of the continent of Africa, Asia, Australia, America, Latin America, Europe, they have different shapes. At first glance, 
This statement seems rather obvious and unimportant, but it turns out to have a profound impact on human behavior. Wow, that's crazy. So, you know, we have some people here in this life from the continent of Asia. We have some people from Africa, some people in Europe, some people in Latin America. So it says it turns out that this has a huge effect on human behavior. The primary axis of the Americas runs from north to south. That is, the landmass of North and South America tends to be tall and thin rather than wide and fat. The same is generally true for Africa. Meanwhile, the landmass that takes up Europe, Asia, and the Middle East is the opposite. This massive stretch of land tends to be more east-west in shape. According to Diamond, this difference in shape played a significant role in the spread of agriculture over the centuries. Hmm, this is so interesting. Farmers had an easier time expanding along east-west routes than along with north-south ones. This is because locations along the same latitude generally share similar climates, um, amounts of sunlight and rainfall, and changes in season. These factors allowed farmers in Europe and Asia to domes. Um, so this is the map. This is so interesting. Um, the shape of human behavior. So uh, North and South America, up and down, or South and North. Africa, the same. And then Asia or Europe, it's East or West. Let's see. Indicate a few crops grow, uh, grow them along the entire stretch of land from France to China. By comparison, the climate varies greatly when traveling from north to south. Just imagine how different the weather is in Florida compared to Canada. You can be the most talented farmer in the world, but it won't help you grow Florida oranges in the Canadian winter. This is very interesting, guys. Um, I hope you pay attention and you understand this fact about human behavior. I repeat, you can be the most talented farmer in the world. You can be the most talented farmer in the world, but it won't help you grow Florida oranges in the Canadian winter. Snow is a poor substitute for, for soil. In order to spread crops, in order to spread crops, north-south routes, farmers would need to find and domesticate new plants whenever the climate changed. As a result, agriculture spread two, three times faster across Europe, Asia and Europe, and than it did up and down the Americas. Over the span of centuries, this small difference had a very big impact. Increased food production, uh, increased food production allowed for more rapid population growth. Rapid means very quick. With more people, these cultures were able to build stronger armies and were better equipped to develop new technologies. The changes started out small, a crop that spread slightly further a population that grew slightly faster, but compounded into substantial differences over time. The spread of agriculture provides an, an example of the third law of behavior change on a global scale. Conventional wisdom holds that motivation is the key to habit change. Conventional wisdom traditional wisdom, traditional belief, is that motivation is the most important thing to have a change. Maybe you already wanted this. Maybe if you already wanted this, you would actually do it. But the truth is, our real motivation is to be lazy and to do what is convenient 
It's so true, guys. All my lazy people out here, comment. <laughs> I'm one of the lazy ones sometimes. Maybe if you really wanted it, you would actually do it. But the truth is our real motivation is to be lazy and do what is convenient. Do what's easy. And despite what the latest productivity bestseller will tell you, this is a smart strategy, not a dumb one. It's not dumb, actually, to try to look for an easy way, you know. But let's see. Energy is precious, and the brain is wired to conserve it whenever possible. It's human nature to follow the, th the law of least effort, which states that, that when deciding between two similar options, people will naturally gravi gravitate toward the option that requires the least amount of work. For example, expanding your farm to the east where you can grow the same crops rather than heading north where the climate is different, right? Out of all the possible actions we could take, the one that is realized is the one that delivers the most value for the least effort. We are motivated to do what's easy. We are motivated to do what's easy. Do you guys agree? Some person said, I don't buy it, but okay. Who was it? Uh, good morning. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. I don't buy it. You're not. I don't understand Marum, but um, you can comment to explain what you mean by you don't buy it. Guys, so this is uh, this is why a lot of times, you know, in people fall for commercials and stuff like that. Uh, it says, oh, learn English in 10 days. First of all, that's fake. That, that's impossible. But they try to sell you this because we are by nature lazy and we want the easy way. Right? Uh, great, interesting passage. Oh, yeah. If you, if you bought this book, you should totally read it. It's a great book. Um, yeah, by nature. By nature, would you rather stay in bed or... Get out immediately. By nature, you have to make an effort to get out of it, right? But I bet you, you know, if somebody said, hey, there's, you can work from your bed. I think a lot of people would apply. <laughs> but anyway, every action, every action. Uh, this is the name of the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Atomic Habits by James Clear. A great book about learning how habits work, how to make, how to build good habits and how to um, break bad habits. Every action requires a certain amount of energy. Every action requires a certain amount of energy. The more energy, the more energy required, the less likely it is to occur the less possible it is to occur. If your goal is to do 100 push-ups per day, I love this, guys. You really need to pay attention. If your goal is to do 100 push-ups a day, that is a lot of energy. In the beginning, when you're motivated and excited, you can muster the strength to get started. But after a few days, such a massive effort feels exhausting. Meanwhile, sticking to the habit of doing one push-up per day requires almost no energy to get started, right? And the less energy a habit requires, the more likely it is to occur. Look at any behavior that fills up much of your life and you will see that it can be performed with very low levels of motivation. Habits like scrolling on your phone, like a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of you guys were scrolling on TikTok that, and you found my live, right? A lot of you are scrolling, right? It's habit. We're all guilty of it. 
So <laughs> this is about us right here. So habits like scrolling on your phone on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram. I'm very happy you are scrolling because I hope that this will benefit you. Even if, if you're addicted to TikTok and this will help you get off TikTok, I don't really care if it helps you in your life and TikTok is not benefiting you very well in your life. Um, I don't, you know, getting off TikTok is better. A lot of times I actually don't recommend TikTok for people. If, if you know you're going to get addicted to TikTok, you should not be on TikTok, you know. But if you think it will benefit you, you should be on TikTok because there's a lot of good content on TikTok. Anyway, so habits like scrolling on your phone, on our phones, checking email, watching television, steal so much of our time. They steal our time because they can be performed almost without effort. They are remarkably convenient. Like imagine if you had to get on TikTok, imagine if you had to plug in your phone like a TV and it's like a big screen and you have to plug in, you have to put in a password and do all of that. I bet you <laughs> I wouldn't have 191 people on live right now. But because it's so easy, you just go, go to the app and start scrolling. That's why some bad habits that are so easy and enticing are very dif um, are very dangerous but very easy. So um because by nature we are lazy. All right. Your pronunciation is amazing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I actually teach English and that's why I speak clearly and um so and I have a free podcast. You can find the links on my uh profile, but I appreciate it. Thank you for your support. Fantastico. Muchas gracias. All right, let's go. In a sense, every habit is just an obstacle to getting what you really want. Dieting, dieting is, is an obstacle to getting fit, is a bump. It's a, like, a, what's an, how do you explain obstacle? I don't know how to explain it. Um, obstacle means like something that, that is on your way that stops you from getting something. So dieting is an obstacle to getting fit. Meditation is an obstacle to feeling calm. Journaling, yes, it pre prevents. Obstaculo, obstaculo. Yeah, buen trabajo. Journaling is an obstacle to thinking clearly. You don't actually want the habit itself. What you really want is the outcome the habit delivers. This is like, this is powerful, guys. A lot of times you get on TikTok or we get on Instagram. It's not the habit. It's You get on there because um, you want to feel different. It's about what you, how it makes you feel. Like maybe you're sad or something and you think Instagram or TikTok will provide happiness or it makes you feel better. That's what you're seeking, what we are seeking. Thank you for sending roses and all of that. I appreciate it. Thank you for sending live. And, um, and thank you for sharing my life with your friends. I appreciate it very much. So what you really want is the outcome, the habit delivers. This is really, really important. The greater the obstacle, that is, the more difficult the habit, the more friction there is between you and your desired end state. This is why it's crucial to make your habits so easy that you will do them even when you don't feel like it. I'm going to repeat. This is why it's very, very important to make your habits so easy that you will do them even when you don't want to do them. If you can make your good habits more convenient, you'll probably, uh, sorry, you'll be more likely 
to follow through on them, you will probably be successful in continuing your habit. All right? This is muy, 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 muy importante. Okay? Muhim jiddan if we have any Arabic people. But what about all the moments when we seem to do the opposite? If you're all so lazy, then how do you explain people um, accomplishing hard things like raising a child or starting a business or climbing Mount Everest? Well, certainly you are capable of doing very hard things. Guys, like I have literally experienced this in my own life. I have done things in my life that I never thought I could do. Like human humans are very, very powerful. You think you're not, but you really are. Like I have done trainings and things like that uh, the past summer that I really never thought I could do. Because by nature, we are capable of doing very difficult things. The problem is that some days you feel like doing hard work and some days you feel like giving in or giving up. On the tough days, on the difficult days, it's crucial to have as many things working in your favor as possible so that you can overcome the challenges life naturally throws your way. The less friction you face, the less difficulty you face, the easier it is for your stronger self to emerge. This is very important. So some days are just not good, guys. And don't be hard on yourself. Don't when you're having a bad day or when things are difficult, you need to understand that's a nature, the nature of life. And you should try your best to do what you can without pushing very, very hard, you know? The idea behind make it easy is not to only do easy things. You know, earlier I was talking about late, like we are lazy. But even if by nature we are a little bit lazy, that doesn't mean we should do lazy things or e easy things. The idea is to make it as easy as possible in the moment to do things that pay off in the long run. So to make it easy, right? The idea is to make it as easy as possible in the moment to do things that pay off in the long run. I always, when I, whenever I talk about social media, whenever I talk about our smartphones, I always say, if you want to be uh, benefiting, if you want to benefit from your from your smartphone, like all these really, really good apps that we have, you have to make it easy. Put the good apps in the first page. This will help you. This will, sh you know, the first thing you see when you open your phone is that what? What happens? You see those things. So you have to trick your brains to make things easy for you, right? And for the apps that you don't need, that are addictive or whatever, addicting, you put those in the in the end of the phone, right? In the in the in last pages on the phone. This will help you uh, not be so addictive, and you're making the good habits easy and the bad habits difficult. All right, let's go to the next page. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, thank you for joining first of all, and also I am reading this book called Atomic Habits. And this chapter is about how to make your habits easy. The law of least effort. How to achieve more with less effort. How to achieve more with less effort. Imagine you're holding a garden hose. Do you guys know what a hose is? A hose is, um, you know, a piece of tube that is plastic or rubber, whatever, that water goes through it, then you can use it like for watering your plants or the garden or whatever. So that is a hose. Um, thank you.
and I've learned so much from it. So um, I am not the kind of person who wants to read so many books. How much money will I pay? I want to be. It's actually only fifteen something dollars a an hour, which is a really good deal, and it's a five week intensive course, and you will learn so much. Um, about how to learn independently. The way I teach English is I prepare you to become an independent learner, not needing a teacher in the future to learn by yourself. So that's how I teach. Uh, it's a five week uh, program, two days a week. You should go check out my. The link is in bio, and you can just book it from my website. Um, or if you know someone who needs to practice English. You should totally go, because I guarantee you, you will benefit from it so much.、Um, and it's a group,、um, it's a group、uh, class via Zoom, so it's really fun. And we're gonna have people from a、um, bunch of different countries. How can I pay? It's on the website.、Uh, want to draw more? So let's get back to the book. You want to draw more? Do you want to draw more? Like maybe you are a painter or you like to draw more. What do you need to do? Come here, come here.、Uh, what happened to the focus? Okay. Want to draw more? Put your pencils, pens, notebooks, and drawing tools on top of your desk within easy reach. Want to exercise? Set your workout clothes. Shoes and gym bag and water bottle ahead of time. Want to improve your diet? Chop up a ton of fruits and vegetables on weekends and pack them in containers, so you have easy access to healthy, ready-to-eat options during the week. These are simple ways to make the good habit the path of least resistance. You can also invert this principle and prime the environment to make bad behaviors difficult. You see, I was telling telling you earlier about that. If you find yourself watching too much television, for example, then unplug it after each use. Only un only plug it back if you can say out loud the name of the show you want to watch. That's why Netflix is so bad, guys. Like a lot of people don't know. Don't know what movie to watch or what to watch, but they just go on Netflix and they spend an hour looking for one. You know, it, I love this. I really love this part. It says, "Only plug it back or only turn on your TV if you can say out loud the name of the show you want to watch." This is this is pretty powerful right there. So, this setup creates just enough friction to prevent mindless viewing. If that doesn't do it, you can take it a step further. Whew, interesting. If that doesn't do it, you can take it a step further. Unplug the television and take the batteries out of the remote after each use. Unplug the television and take the batteries out of the remote after each use. So it takes an extra ten seconds to turn it back on. And if you're really hardcore, move the television. Okay, this is too crazy, <laughs> but hey, if it works for you, move the television out of the living room and into a closet after each use. Okay, this is for people that are serious addicts. <laughs> You can be sure you will only take it out when you really want to watch something. The greater the friction, the less likely the habit. Whenever possible, I leave my phone in a different room until lunch. When it's right next to me, I will check it all morning for no reason at all. It's very true. This part is true. I leave my phone in a different room until. Until lunch, when it's right next to me, I'll check it all morning, for no reason at all. When it is,、uh, when when it's in another room, 
I rarely think about it. And the friction is high enough that I won't go get it without reason. As a result, I get three to four hours each morning when I can work without interruption. If sticking your phone in another room doesn't seem like enough, tell a friend or family member to hide it from you for a few hours. Ask a coworker to keep it at their desk in the morning and give it back to you at lunch. Very interesting, but some of these are a little bit uh, too much, but hey, I like it. It's remarkable how little friction is required to prevent unwanted behavior. When I hide beer in the back of the fridge where I can't see it, I drink less. When I delete social media apps, when I delete social media apps from my phone, it can be weeks before I download them again and log in. These tricks are unlikely to curb a true addiction, but for many of us, a little bit of friction can be a, the difference between sticking with a good habit or sliding into a bad one. Imagine the cumul what is it? Cumulative, cumulative impact collective impact of making dozens of these changes and living in an environment designed to make the good behaviors easier and the bad behaviors harder. Whether we are approaching, we're getting, uh, we're approaching behavior change, we're getting closer to behavior change as an individual, a parent, a coach, or a leader we should ask ourselves the same question. How can we design a world where it's easy to do what's right? Guys, this is gold right there. This is gold right there. What do you think? Any comments, thoughts, reflections? How can we design a world where... It's easy to do what's right. When it's easy to do what's right, you will do what's right. When it's easy to do what's wrong or what's bad, then you are going to do what's bad, you know? It's just nature of human behavior. Redesign your life so that the actions that matter most are also the actions that are easiest to do. All right, so this is another thing I really, really love about this book. Something I really love about this book. And by the way, we're reading Atomic Habits. This is the name of the book. The thing I really love about it is chapter summary at the end of every chapter. So like my thing is a lot of times I'm reading a book and then, but I don't remember maybe certain things. So, but this book at the end of every chapter there's a chapter summary it's awesome this will like when you read it it'll remind oh yeah this is what i read so it creates your memory like strengthens your memory and your connection with the information that you read in that chapter human behavior follows the the law of least effort we will naturally gravitate move towards the option that requires the least amount of work. Create an environment where doing the right thing is as easy as possible. Create an environment where doing the right thing is as easy as possible. Reduce the friction associated with good behaviors. When friction is low, habits are easy. Increase the fr friction associated with bad behaviors. When frictions are high, habits are difficult. Prime your environment, set your environment, uh, design your environment, prepare your environment to make the future actions easier. To make the future actions easier. Wow. So 
This is going to be the last chapter that I'm going to read. How to stop procrastinating by using the two minute rule. How to stop procrastinating. I don't know what that thing is. Okay. How to stop procrastinating. Guys, what is the meaning of procrastinating? Do you know the meaning of procrastination? Because if you don't know the meaning, I need to explain how to explain how to how to explain procrastination. Uh, how to how to stop procrastinating? What is what is procrastination? So basically, procrastination means I will do it later. Yeah, I'll just do it later. I feel like, is there any schedule or something like that for reading? I feel like I missed a lot. A uh, Mr. Moreau, Mr. Mose, uh, Mr. Mo, I think you're from Saudi. And thank you for joining my live again because I've seen you a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't create an event this time. Um, but I will post this live on my YouTube if you want to read it or watch it again later. Um, procrastination means to, to delay something, to delay action, push something for later. Yeah, very good, Ellie Chake. Thanks for helping me. Um, procrastination means to delay action, to think that Um, it means you are going to do something later, which is not good, which is not good. So procrastination, procrastination. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say, um, uh, that, um, what was I going to say? I don't know, but anyway, so yeah. So using the two minute rule, let's see. By the way, this is something else that I really love about this book is that uh, the beginning of every chapter starts with a story, okay? Like some research, experiment, whatever. Uh, that's also really, really cool. Anyway, so uh, I don't know this person's name. Twila Tharp, okay. Tula Tharp is widely regarded as one of the greatest dancers and choreographers of the modern era. In 1992, she was awarded the uh, MacArthur Fellowship, often referred to as the Genius Grant, and she, had, she has spent the bulk of her career, a big part of her career, touring the globe to perform um, her original works. She also credited, credits much of her success to simple daily habits. There you go, guys. There you go again. Habits. Every successful person. Um, I mean, human behavior, your whole life is, um, you know, made up of habits. What you do every day. I begin each day of my life with a ritual. Oh, nice. You guys know what a ritual is? Ritual means... Um, a behavior or something that you do on a regular rig ritual. I wake up at 5.30 a.m., put on my workout clothes, my leg warmers, my sweatshirt, and my hat. I walk outside my Manhattan home, hail a taxi, and tell the driver to take me to the Pumping Iron Gym at 91st Street and 1st Avenue, where I work out for two hours. Oh my God, that is, that is powerful. Every day waking up at 5.30, doing the exact same thing. And for those of you who don't know where Manhattan is, like if you're from a different country, Manhattan is uh, New York City, okay? So I walk outside of Manhattan, hail a taxi, and tell the driver to take me. I'm just going to mark this because I think it's, it's pretty deep. Uh, so where I work out for two hours, the ritual is not the stretching and weight training I put my body through each morning at the gym. The ritual is the cab, 
The moment I tell the driver where to go, I have completed the ritual. What? That's crazy. Oh, guys, it's a little blurry. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Okay. The ritual is not stretching and weight training I put, on, I put my body through each morning at the gym. The ritual is the taxi. The ritual is the taxi. The moment I tell the driver where to go, I have completed the ritual. It's a simple act, but doing it the same way each morning habitualizes it, makes it repeatable, easy to do. This is pretty deep. It's a simple act, but doing it the same way each morning makes it a habit, makes it repeatable, makes it easy to do. It reduces the chance that I work and that I would skip it or do it differently. It's one more item in my arsenal of routines and one less thing to think about. Hailing a cab, hailing a cab, calling a taxi each morning may be a tiny action, but it is a splendid example of the third law of behavior change. Researchers estimate that 40 to 50% of our actions on any given day are done out of habit. This is already a substantial percentage, but the true influence of your habit is even greater than these numbers suggest. Habits are automatic choices that influence the conscious decisions that follow. Yes, a habit can be completed in just a few seconds, but it can sh also shape the actions that you take for minutes or hours afterwards. Habits are like the entrance ramp to a highway. Habits are like the entrance ramp to a highway. They lead you down to a path and before you know it, you are speeding towards the next behavior. It seems to be easier to continue what you're already doing than to start doing something different. You sit through a bad movie for two hours. By the way, I never do that. I never do that. If I hate a movie, like I'm watching a movie, it's a bad movie. Why should I waste two hours just so I can tell my friends I watch this movie? If you don't like a movie, you watch 30 minutes, it's boring. Or if you're reading a book, you're you read 10 pages and it's not good, read a little bit more. If you don't like it, stop it, you know? Um, or that's just me, right? You keep snacking even when you're already full. You check your phone for just a second, right? Just a second. But then it'll be two hours later, you're still scrolling. And I'm talking to myself. Um, and soon you have spent 20 minutes st staring at the screen. And this way, the habits you follow without thinking also determine the choices you make when you're thinking. So a lot of times we do, we do things without thinking. And those are the habits, right? And so if you're creating more good habits that you do without thinking, you're going to reduce the actions or the bad things that you do without thinking. So basically just replacing, right? Each evening there's a tiny moment, usually around 5.15 p.m. that shapes the rest of my night. My wife walks in the door from work and either we change into our workout clothes and head to the gym or we crash in onto the couch, order Indian food and watch The Office. Similar to Twila Tharp hailing the cab, the ritual is changing into my workout clothes. You see, the whole thing your whole habit, the habits that we're trying to create. The habits we're trying to create. Sorry, guys. I don't know why it's getting blurry. Yo, chill. Okay. The habits. The habits. The habits that we are trying to create. Why is it blurry? 
Guys, sorry. Okay. Okay. Where are we? Mm. The ritual is changing. The ritual is changing into my workout clothes. If I change clothes, I know the workout will happen. So that's the whole thing. That is the whole thing. That is the whole thing right here. The ritual is changing into my workout clothes. If I chose, I know the workout will happen. Everything that follows, driving to the gym, deciding which exercises to do, stepping under the bar, is easy once I've taken the first step. So the same thing, guys, for practicing English or for reading a book. The, the, the most difficult part is the, the grabbing the book part or opening the book. Once you do that, the rest follows. All you do is you're just going to start reading, you know? Like for me this morning, I actually wasn't even planning on doing this live. I was going to go for a hike, but then I decided, you know what? I'm going to do a live first and then I'll go. And here we are, guys. An hour later, we have read. I mean, this has been amazing uh, for me, just reading it and practicing um, all these, like uh, remembering all these uh, things. But sharing it with you guys also has been a huge motivation. So anyway. Every day, there are a handful. By the way, there's another book called Eat That Frog. Have, has anyone heard that book? Eat That Frog. Eat That Frog. It's kind of similar. It's a similar uh, method where um, you say... I'm just going to work out today. I am going to do it only today. I'm going to go to the gym. So every day you just keep saying that. You're like, we're just going to go uh, one more time. All right. So uh, we are here. I refer to these choices or decisive moments. Decisive moments. Important moments. I like this. Um, so every day there are a handful of moments that deliver an outsized impact. I refer to these little choices or decisive moments. The moment you decide between ordering takeout or cooking dinner. The moment you choose between driving your car or riding your bike. The moment you decide between starting your homework or grabbing the video game controller, these choices are a fork in the road. Decisive moments set the options available to your future self. I repeat, decisive moments set the options available to your future self. Decisive moments set the options available to your future self. For so this is really interesting here. I'm gonna try to understand what's going on. But bad day, good day, good choice, bad choice, good choice. So basically every day we're doing choices. The difference between a good day and a bad day is often I like that let's see this part. The difference between a good day and a bad day is often a few productive, healthy choices made at decisive moments. Each day is like a fork on the road. And these choices stack up throughout the day and can ultimately lead to very different outcomes. <clears throat> good stuff. We will get to the two-minute rule and we'll see what, what it talks about. For instance... Walking into a restaurant is a decisive moment. Walking into a restaurant is a decisive moment because it determines what you will be eating for lunch. 
it determines what you'll be eating for lunch. Technically, you are in control of what you order. But in, larger, in a larger sense, you can only order an item if it's on the menu. If you walk into a steakhouse, you can, you can get a sirloin or a ribeye, but not sushi. Your options are, are constrained by what's available. They are shaped by the first choice. This is very true. I mean, the moment you go inside um, McDonald's, well, it's not going to go very, very well, right? Unless you order water. <laughs> uh, we're limited by where our habits lead us. This is why mastering the decisive moments throughout your day is so important. Each day is made up of many moments, but it's really a few habitual choices that determine the path you take. These little choices stack up, build up. Stack up means build up. Stack up, build up. Each one setting, each one setting the trajectory, trajectory for how you spend the next chunk of time. Habits are the entry point, not the end point. They are the cab not the gym. This is very true. We shall highlight it. So when you say I have bad habits, or when I say I have bad habits, it's really not bad habits. It's, it's the, the first decisions you make in the beginning of each day or the beginning of every uh, routine that sets the next hour or two hours, the day, whatever. The habits are the entry point, not the end point. They are the cab, not the gym. The two-minute rule. Even when you know you should start small, it's easy to start too big. When you dream about making a change, excitement inevitably takes over and you end up trying to do too much too soon. This is why, personally, me, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions or changing your entire life for the better on January 1st. Because a lot of people start going to the gym and working out very, very hard for the next, like for a few weeks, and then they get exhausted and then they stop. Because the, the decision is motivated by the excitement of New Year, not something deeper and more meaningful that's changing your lifestyle or you know trying to become better and eat healthier so anyway the most effective way i know uh where are we okay the most effective way i know to counteract this tendency is to use the two minute rule which states when you start a new habit you should take less than two minutes to do oh wow this is so interesting Whew. i think yeah i remember this when i first read it and i've forgotten it this is this is cool so you can only do it for two minutes so say you are building you're building a new habit of reading a book it should take less than two minutes to do you will find that nearly any habit can be scaled down into a two-minute version, right? Read before bed each night becomes read one page. Read one page. You're tricking your brain, you know? Do 30 minutes of yoga becomes take out my yoga mat. Study for class becomes open my notes. F fold the laundry becomes fold one pair of socks. Run three miles becomes tie my running shoes let's see let's see if it's the part that i remember or it's something different the idea is to make your habits as easy as possible to start anyone can meditate for one minute read one page or put one item of clothing away and if we have just discussed 
And as we have just discussed, this is a powerful strategy um, because once you've started doing the right thing, it's much easier to continue doing it. A new habit should not feel like a challenge. The actions that follow can be challenging, but the first two minutes should be easy. What you do is a gateway habit. Gateway habit. That naturally leads you to lead you down a more productive path. You can usually figure out the gateway habit that will lead to your desired outcome by mapping out your goal on a scale from very easy to very hard. For instance, running a marathon is very hard. Running a 5K is hard. Walking 10,000 steps is moderately difficult. Walking 10 minutes is easy. And putting on your running shoes is very easy. Your goal might be to run a marathon, but your gateway habit is to put on your running shoes. That's how you follow the two-minute rule. So this is like some exa- these are some examples about um, habits like that are very easy, that are very difficult. And I've always used this honestly in many, um, in many parts of like achieving things in my life. Like when I started um, making TikTok videos, my goal was not to have, you know, 80,000 followers, right? My goal was to make one or two videos a day. And that was very, very easy. And I wasn't expecting like huge results. My goal, if my goal was like, oh, I want to I wanna have millions and millions of followers or thousands and thousands of followers, that would not have been a good motivation. Anthony, uh, oh, that's one of my students. Thank you for joining, um, Anthony. Okay, so, but when you when you decide that whatever you're starting in your life, you're deciding with a small decision, then it will be easier. So let's see, putting on your running shoes. Very, very easy. Write one sentence. Let's say you're practicing English. You say, I'm just going to write one sentence. I'm going to learn one word. Only one word. Opening your notes. These are very easy. Walk 10 minutes. This is very easy. Uh, Not like very, very easy, but it's easy. 10 minutes. Write one paragraph. Study for 10 minutes. It's easy. Moderate. Walk 10,000 steps. By the way, uh, I walk 10,000 steps every day. Let's see where we're at now. We are at 500. So (laughs) 500 steps. So we are going to go for a nice, nice two, three mile walk afterwards. Uh, We will get to the 10,000 steps. But um, it's moderate. It's not very easy, but yeah. Write 1,000 words, moderate. Study for three hours, hard. Running a 5K, write a 5,000-word article, get straight A's. Earning a PhD, write a book, run a marathon. See, these are very, very hard. But if you start here, you will get here. But you have to start here. Everything, you have to start here. The difficult thing is to maintain the routine. Very, very true. But if you continue doing the same thing when you start the routine, the difficult thing will be easier. So, yeah. People often think that... People often think that it's it's weird to get hyped about reading one page or meditating for one minute or making one sales call. But the point is not to do one thing. The point is to master the habit of showing up. It's all about showing up, guys. Showing up and get it done. Who's showing up? We don't know. The truth is a habit must be be established before it can be improved. 
I like that. The habit, a habit must be established before you can improve it. I remember when I first started recording my podcast. I mean, now looking back and looking at. You know, what was I going to say? Uh, when I started recording my podcast a couple years ago. Now looking back, some of my episodes are really bad quality. So I had to go back and actually <laughs> re-record the same topic because I'd be like, oh, this is a good topic. But my voice and the quality was very bad. But I feel proud of myself that I started it, right? I started that. Because a lot of times we are looking for perfection. You want to... You want, you're waiting for the right moment to start something. But the point is really simply showing up and starting it. And then you will get better and better and better in the process. Do the easy thing on a more consistent basis, on a more regular basis. You have to standardize before you can optimize. As you master the art of showing up, the first two minutes simply become a ritual at the beginning of a larger routine. This is not merely a hack to make habits easier, but actually the ideal way to master a difficult skill. The more you ritualize the beginning of a process, the more likely it becomes that you can slip into the state of deep focus that is required to do great things. By doing the same warm-up before every workout, you make it easier to get into a state of peak performance. By following the same creative ritual, you make it easier to get into the hard work of creating. By developing a consistent power-down habit, you make it easier to get to get a bed at a reasonable time each night. You may not be able to automate the whole process, but you can make the first action mind, mindless. Make it easy to start and rest will follow. Make it easy to start and the rest will follow. Make it easy to start and the rest will follow. There you go. This is power, power right there. The two-minute rule can seem like a trick to some people. You know that the real goal is to do more than just two minutes. So it may feel like you're trying to fool yourself. Well, I think sometimes we need to and we should fool ourselves. I'm going to start um, actually tricking this, using this trick. Nobody is actually aspiring to read one page or to do one push-up or open their notes. And if you know it's a mental, mental trick, why would you fall for it? You know? If the two-minute rule feels forced, try this. Do it for two minutes and then stop. Go for a run, but... You must stop after two minutes. Start meditating, but you must stop after two minutes. Study Arabic, study English, study Spanish. Uh, what other, other language are you guys practicing? But you must stop after two minutes. It's not a strategy for starting. It's the whole thing. Your habit can only last 120 seconds. One of my readers used this strategy to lose over 100 pounds. That's crazy. Whew. One of my readers used this strategy, this two-minute strategy. Uh, let me highlight that too. So... One of the 
readers. By the way, for those of you who don't know, I'm reading this book called Atomic Habits. Atomic means very small. All right. Uh, it's funny because we're talking about small rule here. Uh, let's see. Where are we? It's not a strategy for starters. The whole thing you're having can only be... One of my readers used this strategy to lose over 100 pounds. In the beginning, he went to the gym each day, but he told himself he wasn't allowed to stay more than five minutes. He would go to the gym, exercise for five minutes, and leave as soon as his time was up. After a few weeks, he looked around and thought, If, well, I'm always coming here anyway, I might as well start staying a little longer. A few years later, the weight was gone. Journaling provides another example. Nearly everyone can benefit from getting their thoughts out of their, their head and onto paper. But most people give up a few days to av or avoid it entirely because journaling feels like a chore. The secret is to stay below one point where it feels like work. Greg Mc... whatever this person's name is, a leadership consultant from United Kingdom, built a daily journaling habit by specifically writing less than he felt like. He always stopped journaling before... Uh, before it seemed like a hassle, be before it seemed like something boring or difficult. Ernest Hemingway believed in similar advice for any kind of writing. The best way is to always stop when you're doing good, when you're going good, he said. Strategies like this, like this work for another reason, too. Strategies like this work for another reason. Oh, strategies like this work for another reason, too. They reinforce the identity you want to build. If you show up at the gym five days a row, five days in a row, uh, even if it's for two minutes, you are casting votes for your new identity. In, in another part in the book, it talks about that, this vote thing, an identity. If you are uh, going to the gym even for two minutes, you're casting votes for your new identity. You are not worried about getting in shape. You are focused on becoming the type of person who doesn't miss workout. You are taking the smallest action that confirms the type of person you want to be. We rarely think about change this way because everyone is consumed by the end goal. This is very true, guys. The end goal is a killer. The end goal is a killer. Saying I want to be fit or I want to be I want to have six packs. That's the end goal. And that's the killer. But one push up is better than not exercising because you're creating a lifestyle. You're creating an identity. One minute of guitar practice is better than none at all. This is what I always tell my students. This is what I always tell my students. 20 minutes of practicing English is better than no minutes. But it's also going to help you review and remember all the words and everything that you learned, you know? And it's going to motivate you to practice more. One minute of reading is better than never picking up a book. It's better to do less than you hoped than to do nothing at all. That's why this book is called Atomic Habits, Small Things. Small things, big changes. Or small changes, big results. At some point, once you've established the habit and you're showing up each day, you can combine the two-minute rule with a technique we call habit shaping. Habit shaping. 
to scale your habit back up towards your ultimate goal. Start by mastering the first two minutes of the smallest version of yourself, of the behavior. Then advance to an, an intermediate step and repeat the process. Focus on just the first two minutes and mastering that stage before moving on to the next level. Eventually, you will end up with the habit you had originally hoped to build while still keeping your focus where it should be. On the first two minutes of the behavior. Nearly any larger life goal can be transformed into a two-minute behavior. I want to live a healthy and long life. I need to stay in shape. I need to exercise. I need to change into my workout clothes. I want to have a happy marriage. I need to be a good partner. I should do something each day to make my partner's life easier. It's all about the small things, guys. It's all about the small things. I should meal plan for the next week. I should bring her or I should make her a cup of tea. I should bring her a cup of water or him, whatever. Whenever you are struggling to stick with a habit, you can employ the two minute rule. It's a simple way to make your habits easy. Chapter summary. You see, the thing I was telling you about, the part that I love about this book, chapter summary, guys. Chapter summary. Habits can be completed in a few seconds, but continue to impact your behavior for minutes or hours afterwards. Many habits occur at decisive moments. Choices that are like a fork in the road and either send you and either send you in the direction of productive day or unproductive one. The two-minute rule states, when you start a new habit, it should take less than two minutes to do. The more you ritualize the beginning of a process, the more likely it becomes that you can slip into the state of deep focus that is required to do great things. Standardize before you optimize. You can't improve a habit that doesn't exist. Whew. You cannot improve a habit that does not exist. You cannot improve a habit that does not exist. Any comments on this? Habit shaping. This is a good example um, about habit shaping. Habit. We have five phases. Becoming an early riser. Like if you want to wake up early, early morning. Be home by 10 p.m. every night. This is phase one. Have all devices, TV, phone, etc. turned off by 10 p.m. every night. Or maybe put on silent or something. I don't recommend turning off your phone when you sleep because I mean what if you get an emergency or family emergency or something right it's kind of selfish if you turn off your phone before you sleep uh, be in bed by 10 p.m. every night reading a book talking with your partner phase four lights off by 10 p.m. every night wake up at 6 a.m. every so basically if you want to wake up early Sleep early. Becoming vegan. Start eating vegetables at each meal. Stop eating animals with four legs. Cow, pig, lamb. I love lamb. And I also love cow. So this does not apply to me here. But for those who are trying to be vegan, vegetarian, maybe this will work for you. But I love, love animal in a different way. <laughs> I love eating them. 
Chicken, whoo, huge fan. Turkey, mm, not, it's, it's a little dry, you know? But anyway, stop eating animals with four legs, cow, pig, lamb, etc. Stop eating animals with two legs. So you just need to reduce one leg at a time. And then stop eating all animal products. I guess this works. Uh, starting to exercise. This is for those of you who want to exercise more or start including myself. Change into workout clothes. Step out the door. Try taking a walk. Drive to the gym. Exercise for five minutes and leave. Exercise for 15 minutes at least once per week. Exercise three times per week. So this is like the phase one. You need to just start with something very, very small. When you're trying to build a new habit, you need to start with something very, very, very small which is as simple as changing into workout clothes. If you want to practice more or read more, then first thing, reading one page or having the book on your desk. All right. So yeah, small steps, small steps. So... That was it for today's live. Wow, this was awesome. What is the name of the book? Atomic Habits. This was the name of the book. Atomic Habits. Atomic means very small. Um, so, uh, in the next live, I'm going to be reading this, this part. It's actually very, very powerful if I remember it correctly. How to make good habits inevitable. Inevitable is a really good word. Unstoppable. Inevitable, inevitable means unstoppable. So how to make good habits inevitable and bad habits impossible. Um, and by the way, actually, after this live today, I'm going to record a podcast I've already written it down, uh, a book review about this book. So for those of you who practice English, who want to improve their English, um, you should subscribe to my podcast. And later today, you will see a new episode about this book, Atomic Habits, where uh, you are going to learn things about this book, like a summary, but also things that I love about this book what it talks about, and uh, a few other things. But um, I want to show you guys one thing about this book. One thing you need to realize, the simplicity of the book, how simple it uh, it's made for you to follow and made for you to understand the concepts and the ideas and the topics. There are four laws of behavior change. First one is to make it obvious. And that's the, the first part. And then the second law of behavior change is what? Make it attractive. How to make it attractive. So whatever you want to change in your life, whether you want to read more, you want to... Uh, exercise more, you want to practice English more, you need to make that habit cool. Like maybe buying some nice shoes, you know, um, and going to a gym that's like, that looks cool or looks nice. The third law is to make it easy. And this is the part that we were reading, this chapter we were reading, to make it easy. You need to make it as easy as possible, people. And, and we are here in chapter 14. And the last law of behavior change. The drum roll. Make it satisfying. To make it satisfying. That means... 
you must feel good after that routine, whatever you did, right? It needs to feel good. It needs to give you the reward that you need because the four, um, the four stages of habit are what? Cue, craving, routine, reward. Cue, craving, routine, reward. The cue is the signal that you get to do that habit. The craving is the strong feeling or motivation or whatever that you need to perform that habit. The response, cue, craving, response, reward. And then the response is the, t the action, the, the routine itself. And then the reward is the good feeling, this making it satisfying. Like you feel proud of yourself, of what you did, right? So that is, um, that is that. And of course it goes on. So this, the last chapter is probably my favorite because um, it's like the culmination of the ending. And then it, the, the book ends with this part, advanced tactics, how to go from being merely good to being truly great. The truth about talent. When genes matter and when they don't. You know, genetics, people think everything is about genetics. Not really. And this is my favorite part. Men are born soft and supple. Dead. When they're dead, they are stiff and hard. Plants are born tender, pliant. Dead, they are brittle and dry. Thus, whoever is stiff and inflexible... Is, this, is a disciple of death. So if you are stiff and inflexible, if you're not willing to change, you are a disciple. Not you, I don't care. <laughs> this just is a disciple of death. Whoever is soft and yielding, who's willing to change, willing to make a change in their life, is a disciple of life. The hard and stiff will be broken. I mean, think about it. Like this is hard, right? There you go, it's broken. But, and speaking of which, anyways, the soft and supple, the soft and flexible and will prevail, will continue living, right? So just think about that. And that will end this live for today. Thank you guys for joining. This was amazing. I'll just stay here maybe for another five minutes. If you have any questions you want to ask, I would love to hear from you and you can write one more time what country you're joining. And for those of you who are asking what book I was reading, Atomic Habits. Um, I will be posting this live afterwards later in this afternoon on my YouTube channel. For those of you who are just joining and didn't read the whole thing or didn't watch the whole thing, I'll be posting that. If you are an English learner, Please go follow, subscribe to my podcast. It's all free. You can practice your English the easy way. And uh, if you're also looking for an intensive English course that's affordable, I am offering one course that's starting on January 30th. The link is in my bio. Um, and I will help you take your English to the next level. So South Africa, wow, that's nice. What else do we have? Consistency is the key to build any habit, absolutely. Uh, South America, fantastic. What else do we have? Panama, Brazil. Uh, let's see, well, Indonesia. If you have YouTube channel, please name the podcast name on Spotify. Name the podcast name on Spotify. Yeah, if, if you go to my, all my links are in my bio. So link in bio, link to my podcast in bio. in my profile. So 
What else do we have? Any other questions? Uh, Algeria, Sri Lanka, Mexico. Wow, Algeria, Spain. We have people from everywhere. This is absolutely amazing. Um, I am from Mexico and I started my morning routine with your life for, for the first time. Thank you. You are absolutely welcome and I hope that you benefited from this live. We were reading this book, about uh, Atomic Habits, and I really, really loved it. And I love how like amazing you guys are and you follow, you pay attention, and uh, you support the live. This motivates me to continue going. What's your YouTube? The Ingler Zone. We have people from Kenya, Uzbekistan, El Salvador. This is crazy. How can I get that book? Amazon, um, eBay. If you can get it from your local uh, bookstore. And you could probably even get it. Uh, well, if you have Audible and you, you like listening, you can get it online. What's your favorite book? Uh, my favorite book. I have a bunch of books I'll show you guys right here. My favorite book might be, I know it might, might be cheesy, but one of my favorite books are um, The Alchemist. I have these books, some of these books that I really like. Um, been reading. I've, I've read all of these. Uh, I think I'm going to be reading this book next. Still Like an Artist. It's really awesome. The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. That is one of my favorite books. Life Changing. The Power of Now. That is a killer. It teaches you how to live in the present moment and not be so worried about the future and all of that. Um, when, that by Daniel Pink. This is also a really, really good book about when to do what. We all have a biological clock. Like if you think about it, every morning you wake up or to learn whether if you're a morning person, you are... You know, uh, this one, Start With Why. This is a good book, Start With Why. Um, it, it helps you learn and find your purpose. What's your purpose in life, you know? What is your purpose in life? Um, this one, I've actually not read the whole thing, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, but it's pretty deep. I only read a part of it. I listened to the book, but I haven't finished it. The Giver. Whew. Yeah, that's a good, good uh, book. I have a, a lot of other books, but they're not here. It's on my bookshelf. Uh, what else? This is a random book. The Checkbox Kid. I saw it in some neighborhood. I wanted to. Um, but really, learn, reading books is life-changing learning books uh, reading books is life-changing this is the cover of atomic habits um i know bestseller whatever i don't care but it's a good book uh one of my other favorite books about habits is you know the classic power of habits This is, this is the book, The Power of Habit. Actually, in this book, Atomic Habits, it talks a lot about this book, The Power of Habit. And this was the original one. I read it back in 20, uh, 2013 or 2014. I really, really love this book. And it's a powerful, powerful book. Uh, the book, Atomic Habits, adds more to it. So you see... Uh, in this book, Q Routine Reward, there's only three stages of atomic habits, of habits. But in here, it adds one more thing, which is right here, craving. So, so yeah, I love this book. I love this little small book, Together is Better by Simon Sinek. A little book of inspiration. It's a pretty book. It's pretty good. Uh, 
uh, says, what is it? Subtle art, not giving an F is too repetitive. I agree with you about one part of it, but the thing I like about the subtle art is um, the fact that it it gives you a different uh, outlook on life. Like, uh, don't follow the crowd. Don't follow the whole thing about being famous or successful. Instead of that, be a good uh, influence, you know? So that's those are things that I love about this book, The Subtle Art. Um, I will say, uh, what was I going to say? And the, I love the part that it says you should always be open-minded and understand that you may be wrong, you know? Uh, hi, here, I'm from Nepal. Very, very cool. So, so yeah, really, really good books. Uh, this book that I really, really want to start reading again, of course, the classic Don Quixote. <laughs> I think I stopped. Like, I haven't read it in so long, but it's a big book. If you haven't, I'm pretty sure you may have heard of it, or you've probably read it, but I have not read it. It's classic, you know. What's your favorite book, guys? What is your favorite book? Hello, namaste. Very cool. Hi. What is your favorite? I would love to see what your favorite book is. You're amazing. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I love the mountain. Is is by you, Brianna Wist. What? I love the mountain. Is is you? The mountain is you. Oh, let me write that down. The mountain is you. The mountain is you. What other books do we have? What else? What other books? It ends with us. It ends. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yeah, that's that's a good one. I, I've actually read it. I have it here. You guys are making me read all my books. Think and Grow Rich. Uh, lots of women self-reflecting. Inner work. Mountain is you. 48 Laws of Power. I've heard of it. Yeah. Robert Greene, I think. I will say my all-time favorite is my all-time favorite book is is not a book that's written by human. It's it's written by God. It's called the Quran. That is my book. Rich Dad Poor Dad. Love it. I love Rich Dad Poor Dad. Actually, it's right here. Rich Dad Poor Dad. So yeah. Uh Psychology of Persuasion. Uh, temperament risk that spirits control temperament. Okay, thank you guys for joining. Uh, thank you for sharing. Becoming her, Michelle Obama. Yeah, I've heard of that, of course. Lots of women self-reflecting. Welcome home. Welcome. That That book looks interesting. Najwa. Very cool, very cool. Uh, Quran is powerful. Yeah, it has everything. Literally has everything. My favorite book, The Obstacle is the Way. Nice books, by the way. Oh, thank you. Obstacle is the way. Obstacle is... I like the title. The other thing I love about this book, Subtle Art, is the, the fact that it talks a lot about... Uh, is what... 
how like life is not perfect. And the better way to live your life is to find better problems to solve because life is full of problems. Finding meaningful problems is the way. Uh, where are you from? I, I live in the United States. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. And, uh, but I'm from Kurdistan originally. Kurdistan in northern Iraq. So do you have any Kurdish people here? Tough people do. Robert Schuller. Tough times never last. Tough times. Never last. Wow, guys. I wrote five books that you guys recommend. Strength in our scars. Strength. Yeah. Do you talk Arabic? Yes, Ahki Arabi. You're amazing. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for joining. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I hope I will see you um, again on my live. If you want to contact me, message me on Instagram. I would love to answer your questions. If you are an English learner, like I said, I'd love to help you take your English to the next level because I learned English myself. So, uh, muchas gracias para, uh, what is, join Reunir and me live. Shukran, zor Thank you very much. I will see you in the next one.